If you're an author, a speaker, or a consultant, then you're going to want to use the power of live streaming video to grow your client base, but also to grow your influence inside your own community. Plus, if you're podcasting, then I'm going to show you how to easily convert that podcast into a live stream video so that you can upload your podcast onto YouTube, Facebook, and a ton more places. We are going to cover some great content today. So stick around. It's the business of live video. And I am your host today. Welcome to the show. I'm Owen Video. You can give me five. That's right. Type five into the comment section now. That is how we say hello on this show. It's something that we do, folks. Something that we do every single week is we do the Air 5. And that's how we get things moving and the energy exciting on the show. And we do have a good show for you today. If it's your first time here, then type new in the comment section. We would love to know that you're here. And remember, you can skip ahead to the 10-minute mark anytime you want if you want to dive right into the content otherwise welcome to the pre-show we have a very exciting episode today we're going to be talking about live streaming for authors speakers and consultants and i got to tell you folks this is really where i think oops this is really where i think i shine you know, as a consultant, because I, I spend most of my time helping authors, speakers, and coaches. And so today's training really does, it really will um, come from the heart. And we have a lot of great content today, so I want to get to it. But first, I want to give a huge congratulations uh, to our winner. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For the last couple of weeks, we have had a contest to win this amazing road pod mic and we were able to pick a winner so congratulations to joe card legends who started a new restream account and won the road pod mic contest hey joe card legends please check your email to redeem this amazing microphone that is perfect for live streaming and you can win one too that's right i said it you can win this microphone too. It is a fantastic microphone designed for podcasting and for live streaming. It comes with its own desktop stand that you can attach to your desk. It even has an internal pop filter to minimize plosives. It's a robust all metal construction. It's normally $100 on Amazon and it has 4.9 out of five stars. And all you have to do to win this microphone is go to epiclivevideo.com and start an account with Restream. And if you're an author, a speaker, or a consultant, then here, let me just tell you the actual fact of life. I'm trying to find my mouse here, is that you are gonna need Restream at some point in your career. Restream is the best and most affordable live streaming software. It is free, but it offers a handful of great features with Restream. You can broadcast your message live and close even more sales. They give you over 250 different websites that you can multi-stream to any time that you want. Plus, you get this fantastic dashboard with tons of great features that allow you to invite guests, record recordings, and these in-depth analytics that will help you to maximize your show and get the best result every single time. You can get started for free at epiclivevideo.com. And when you do, you will be entered to win this Rode Pod mic at epiclivevideo.com. Go set up your free account with Restream right now. And welcome to the show today. Super excited to have you here. My name is Owen, and I want to go and see who is in our audience logging in today. We've already got questions coming in. And so if you guys have questions, I want you to be able to ask them in the comment area as we get started. So tell me right now, where are you logging in from and what do you do? I'd love to hear from you in the chat area. Viper, my man is logging in. And since Viper is here, Tom Nash is here. Great to see you, Tom. Super pumped that you could make it uh, here today. 
we love engaging with our uh, our live stream audience and i want to share with you all how audience can make a huge difference in your live stream life i it's true i the community that's logging in here right now has played a huge role in helping me as a consultant but also helping me as a person and here's what i mean this weekend a ton of my consultant friends got together on YouTube and on Facebook to support me in my battle with cancer. And we wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much, Viper, for all that you did. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Liz. Thank you to all of you who got involved this weekend and helped us to raise not just $16,000, but by the end of the day, using the power of live stream video, we were able to generate over $85,000 to pay for my metabolic treatment for cancer. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you did. And for all of you that are authors, speakers, and consultants, I want you to think about this for a quick second because I'm a consultant. The friends that helped me, they're YouTube and video consultants. And when you use the power of live streaming and video to come together, you can accomplish some big things, whether it's getting more clients, growing your influence, or even raising money for a good cause. And how many of you would love to be in a position where you could do that with live streaming. Let me hear from you in the comment section right now. And I wanna say what's up to my good friend, Christina Smallhorn, who's logging in saying, Owen, thank you for all that you do. Christina, you're a real estate consultant. And I'm super glad that we got to spend all that time together at the mastermind. Sammy Superstar is saying it's not done yet. People are still donating. You are absolutely right. People are still giving to the cause. And that cause goes to support my metabolic and standard of care treatment because cancer is not treated or cancer is, is, is treated as a uh, recurring a recurring issue and insurance doesn't pay for it the second time around. So, you know, I want to appreciate, I want to tell you guys that that's what's going on. Now I want to ask all of you that are watching me and learning about me for the first time. Do I look and act like a cancer patient to you? No, I'm alive. I'm thriving and I'm healthy because of the great treatment that I'm receiving. And so thank you guys, Bradley, Vincent, John Pullum, Liesl, all of you guys for all uh, for helping and for being a part of this message. Now, as a part of this show, we want to dive right into our content. So if you're ready to jump into the content today, say yeah, yeah in the comment section. We have a fantastic show for you today. We're going to be talking about live streaming for authors, speakers, and consultants. And we're going to be talking about how you can leverage the power of live streaming to not only grow your client base, but also to grow your influence online. So I'm going to be going through three big takeaways that you need to understand as a coach or a consultant. And as we get started, I'm going to ask you right now to tag someone that you know who would benefit from this content. Tag them in the comment section below. Okay, or share this video on their timeline right now so that you can give the same opportunity you have to the people that you know in your network. And if you yourself are a consultant, I want to ask you this question. As a consultant, what do you want to accomplish with live streaming? Let me hear from you in the comment section right now. As a consultant, what do you want to accomplish with? live stream. We have a lot of really talented consultants uh, on the, the show today in our live video audience. And if you are watching this on the replay, I want to join us live. We are live every single Monday at noon PST. Okay. So let's get started with today's content. And I want to jump in with tip number one, which is you must separate your buyer's from your audience. 
Okay, you need to be able to separate your buyers from your audience. Now, I'm moving a little slow today because I have, we had a little bit of a technical issue. So I'm using two different hands. I'm kind of like a DJ today. Um, and it's taken me a while to kind of go back and forth between cameras and screen shares. And so I hope you guys will forgive me for that. But what does tip number one mean for coaches and consultants? You have to separate your buyers from your audience. Well, here's the biggest mistake that I see consultants making is you, you go out there and you go live on Facebook, YouTube, or maybe even LinkedIn. If you guys are live streaming on LinkedIn, tell me in the comment section. I would love to hear from you because LinkedIn can kind of be a handful to, to, to manage. But if you, you are live streaming, most of you are live streaming to get customers. Most of you are live streaming to get someone to buy from you, okay? Put, tell me right now in the comment section if getting buyers or customers is your number one priority. Let me hear from you. Now, let me share with you why that's a little bit dangerous because Anytime that you're broadcasting a message, you, you, you've you got sort of this maximum potential of people that, that you can reach. Imagine like a giant circle. And that circle represents everybody that is going is potentially interested in your content. So if you are a business coach for companies under a million dollars, right, then, then you're going to have a pretty wide audience to pick from, right? Your audience is going to be business owners and entrepreneurs under seven figures. Okay, are you guys with me on that? If you're with me, say with you in the comment section. I want to stay very active with you today, okay? But for those of you that are business consultants for you know companies that are 10 million, you're going to have a significantly smaller audience because there are fewer decision makers that are going to hire a coach that are watching YouTube videos, period. $10 million companies, the CEOs or the, 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 uh, the hiring positions inside that company, they're, they're more likely on boats and, and water skiing. You know what I mean? They're more likely enjoying the fruits of their labors and not necessarily watching YouTube videos all the time. So your audience shrinks. Now, that doesn't necessarily matter, okay? What matters is that you're aware of the size of your potential audience. And as an author, a speaker, or a business coach, you have to remember two different things. Your customers are going to buy from you because they saw a video or a live stream that had a lot of views on it or had a lot of engagement on it. They're not necessarily going to see your video and watch it and go, oh my gosh, I got to buy from this girl or I got to buy from this guy. You know, it won't happen that way. They're going to come to your channel and they're going to go, wow, that video has got a thousand views. That video has got a thousand views. This is the consultant I want working for me. Okay. So as you're live streaming, you have to prepare content that is for the widest possible audience. And then within that content, pull your customers out. Because many, for many of you, your customers, the people that are going to buy from you, are, are actually going to be, uh, you know, sort of like event planners um, or they're going to be publishers or, or higher level folks. And so I want to show you what, you know, what that looks like from a strategy perspective. So let's go back to the screen share here and talk about your audience versus your customer. Now, if you have any questions about this content, you know, please ask me in the, in the comment section below. If you're not sure, if you're an author, a speaker, or a consultant, then, then ask your questions in the chat area. We'll get to it. But your audience is the largest possible affinity group of like-minded individuals on the platform. Your audience is the dartboard, so to speak. But your customers are the people from inside your audience who will actually buy from you. OK, your customers are the bullseye. So your live video strategy must first develop audience and then convert them into customers. Now, we we do that with a four part strategy. Savvy Turtle saying, hey, I just noticed your mohawk and I love it. First of all, thank you for noticing, by the way. Um, I believe it or not, like I'm not a big hair care type of guy, uh, but I, I, you know, I take a lot of pride in my hair because I, I am a, a, a 
thriving cancer patient with hair. And I, I like to, I like to honor that. So let's go into our, thank you for that savvy. Let's go into our model. How do you develop content then for this audience. Well, we want you to remember this four part strategy called arch. Okay. It's called arch and it starts with a awareness content. You need to be creating content that bring, that brings awareness to who you are and what you do. Now, remember the people that are in this black area, this awareness, they are not ready to buy from you right now. They have just become aware that they might need your service someday soon. And I think that's really important to, to understand is this is really high level. What is content? So <clears throat> if you're a business coach for companies that are under a million dollars or, um, then, then you want to be creating on as like, what, like, what do you teach them? Probably systems, probably lead generation, probably scaling. So we might want to talk about like, what is scaling? And how can you scale your business? Could be a live stream episode. All right. And that follows this awareness model where it's really like lower level content. Oh, I'm beneath that content. Oh, I know. But the whole idea is that, you know, you want to get your buyers. Think of this as like when your buyers are in the black area, they're children. When they're in the yellow area, they're mature adults. You want to grab them as kids so that they grow all the way into the yellow with you. So you start with that entry level sort of awareness content. Okay. And then you're going to move into research content. Now, research content is when your customer is beginning to evaluate the difference between you and other people in the space. Okay. So they just became aware that they need you. Uh, and now they're going to be researching who they want. Now, here's another example. One of my clients, Ben Fanning, is a phenomenal speaker. And what he does is he helps companies that are over seven figures minimize employee turnover and create more profitability. So when he's doing, he's doing videos that are in the research phase right now. And those are going to be videos where he's showing his tactics and approaches specifically for solving a given problem. So for example, this is like how I, or how, like how I reduce turnover or this strategy made me right. This strategy made my client, you know, uh, a million extra dollars at, uh, this year, or this strategy um, helped my client reduce turnover last year, right? In research, you're highlighting your own talents and you're also comparing, okay, well, I, I should hang on to that. You are getting ready to compare yourself to other providers in the field. Now, what's the difference between research and compare? This is a really good question. In the research phase, the customer is researching. And so you need to be giving them valuable content to research. Why this happens, what happens here, how I got this result, how I got that result. But then when they go into the comparison phase, they're actually going to be comparing you to other people. They're going to be comparing your software to someone else's software. They're going to be comparing your book to someone else's book. So you should be making videos about that, right? My book versus, like we call this a versus silo, and I'll get to that in just a quick second, okay? These are just some quick ideas on how, you know, my book versus this book, or employee turnover versus uh, like reducing turnover versus uh, increasing retention is a great comparative video. So you could talk about why you're the best person for the customer's needs. And that leads the customer, excuse me, the viewer to becoming a hot lead. So if you could be creating content that builds awareness, that, that helps your customer do the research, that compares your product to others, you will create a hot lead in your business. So the big takeaway here that I have for you is you have to separate your audience from your customer. Now, another great example of this, let's go back to Ben Fanning. You know, here's the thing. When Ben speaks on stage, he's speaking to an auditorium full 
of employees who have to be there at that conference. Okay, you guys know what I'm saying? Though it's a captive audience, they have to be there. But he's being hired by the event planner. So it would be wrong for Ben to make a whole video channel that targets event planners. It would instead be valuable to target the organization, the employees. That's the bigger audience. And then from that audience, your event planners will say, wow, that's a great video. That's a great video. That's a great video. Somebody please bring Ben Fanning to our next conference. Are you with me? Say yeah, yeah in the comment section below because that was a big, big topic right there. So tip one is you must separate your primary buyers from your audience to create great content. Okay, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask your questions right now. I want to say what's up to my man, Jordan Michael Thomas. Jordan, I walked into my car the other day, and your song started playing, and it was truly uh, a blessing to me, brother. Thank you for being who you are. Mandy Joe Rindage, the walking coach, is here. I see Jupiter Biru is out there. Eddie Amati from Nigeria. Log in again, and Demi is out there. Great to see you. We've got a Facebook user out there. I can't see your name. My bad. Mini Camper is out there. Great to have you all here today. We did have a couple questions come in. The first one um, uh, is from Anita Sonia. Okay, Anita Sonia is asking a question. How do I get more people to register for my event even though it's for free? Okay, so this question comes from uh, say, how do I get people to show up to my live streams? Now, we covered this in depth last week on our on our show. So you can always go back to the restream channel on YouTube, find our playlist, and go back and watch that for an in-depth look at how to invite people to the event. But let me give you the rundown. First of all, you have to pre-schedule your event. So if you're going to go live on Thursdays, you need to have your event scheduled by Tuesday at the latest. Perhaps Monday would even be a good day. But when you pre-schedule the event, what you've done now is you've created this place where you can get engagement online. So let's say you're going to go live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. You pre-schedule that event using Restream. Restream creates a post on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Then you go back to that post and you start tagging people that you know. And you say, hey, you know, Jim, hey, Sally, hey, you know, past clients, current clients, you know, maybe even colleagues in the space. What do you guys think about this topic? You know, what would you say about this? Now, every time somebody, uh, you know, comments, then, then you go live, it is very likely that your live stream will appear in their news feed when you go live and they'll get an alert for it because they engaged with you earlier on in the week. Now, another part of that is sending out an email to your group, okay? But I would even say that the biggest part of it is streaming on a regular basis. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. We're going to be talking about creating a live stream calendar, okay? That's actually, uh, that's actually coming up in just a minute. But first... I want to go to our next question. Our next question comes from Ed. So, Anita, I hope that that was helpful. Good to see you on the show again. By the way, Anita, Anita is a longtime uh, listener, a good fan of the show, and we're glad to have you here. Josh Pitts is asking a great question. Josh is asking, are you using Restream.io for your broadcast service? We are. We use Restream for everything that we do. You can get a free trial at epiclivevideo.com. Go to epiclivevideo.com. And when you do, you'll be entered for a chance to win a microphone. Okay. Mandy Joe Rindage is asking uh, another, uh, another question. She says, should I create a whole new channel when I only have seven subscribers and it's going to be a totally different audience? Okay, great. So, um, yeah, look, Mandy, um, there, there, I just did a video on when you should start a second YouTube channel or a new YouTube channel. And here's the thing. It's not about really how many subscribers you have. It's really about the audience. And so if, if you're, 
Look, if you're an author, a speaker, and a coach, and the reason we put all three of those together is because oftentimes you're the same thing. You're an author, you're a speaker, and you're a coach, right? When you go to speak, you speak about your book. Oftentimes the book got you there. And, and when you sell a speaking package, there's often consulting built into that program, okay? So here's the thing. If you're targeting business owners under 1 million, then that needs to be its own YouTube channel. But if you have this separate channel where you're going to be talking about fitness tips, you know, because maybe that's a side passion, you're going to put that on a separate channel. Okay. So you always separate the channels based on who you're targeting with the content. Okay. Uh, lots of great stuff coming into the comment section right now. Two buddy is saying massive value uh, being shared by Owen. Uh, Pixel Pia is saying, uh, wow, I was saying I agree with TubeBuddy and my good friend Savvy Turtle, who I've been chatting with on Instagram all weekend, is saying, uh, oh, look, it was saying I'm an Owen super fan, uh, a super fan turtle. That is Josh Pitts is saying, what is the website? One more time. It is epiclivevideo.com. You go to epiclivevideo.com. And when you do, you'll be entered to win the Rode Pod mic that's right there on the screen okay so um we answered mandy's question we've got a question from demi coming in who says uh when should i start to live stream do i need to wait until i have a certain amount of subscribers i think that's a wonderful question the answer is no i actually would start live streaming now so that you can get more subscribers okay i would start live streaming now when I say now, however, do I mean like right now today with no prep and just kind of wing it? I never mean that. I am definitely like a prep guy. So I do want you to put together a show, but I want you to, to go live in three weeks. How about that? I want you to go live in three weeks. I want you to put together a show that you can, you can do in three weeks. Okay, so that you have two weeks to prep and then you can, you can go and you can run that. All right, so let's continue back into our content today and let's kind of jump into tip number two. Great questions, by the way. Keep asking your questions. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be sticking on board to answer your questions. Tip number two is to create a content calendar based on your primary area of expertise. Okay, so in tip number one, we we talked about... Uh, what did we talk about? Let me go back to my notes. We talked about knowing who you're marketing to, knowing who you're making live streams for and separating your buyers from your audience. So now that you know who the bigger audience is, what we want to do is now create content for them. When are we going to go live and what are we going to talk about? Let's talk about the what first, okay? So I want to introduce you to some content that we usually only share in my workshops. And by the way, if you would like to attend a workshop with us, we host monthly workshops that will teach you exactly what to say, exactly what equipment to buy. And we will give you our scripts. We will give you our templates. And all you have to do is type training in the comment section or visit us at owenvideo.com slash training. Register for this free event. We've got two big takeaways here. Oops. Two big takeaways here. Number one is how to strategically use the algorithm on YouTube to get your content seen. And then game changer number two is our four-point content creation strategy called the Video Pro System. We're going to be going into depth and in teaching you how this Video Pro System works. So if that's something that you would like to attend, then all you have to do is go to owenvideo.com slash training, and you can register for that free event, okay? But we are going to continue with the presentation. I'm going to be giving you little snippets uh, that will help you come to that training even more prepared than the average person. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your channel, uh, excuse me, your, your, your live stream channel's name and the value statement. So what does that mean exactly? Well, if you're going to live stream from your Facebook profile or a YouTube page, what are you going to live stream? For example, this show is called The Business of Live Video. Okay. What is your show called? What's your channel name? Okay. 
Paul Peck Drywall, whoop, eh, amazing to see you. You do it's in the house, whoop. Chris Derbovin is in the house, whoop. Ash Borland in the house. Science Gal Aquatics, great to have you all here today. So let's talk about how that works a little bit because your 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 channel name and your value statement should provide the, the foundation for all the content that you're going to talk about. So <clears throat> when we talk about your channel name and your value statement, I want you to think about who your audience is and what you're going to talk about. So for example, you know, this show is called the business of live, the business of live video, where we help you grow your audience and become more famous with live stream video. And that informs the type of content that we're going to make. My good friend, E for electric logging in. Great to have you here, my man. So what are silos? That's the big question. Silos are content categories. It's what you're going to make videos about. So for example, uh, if you are a real estate consultant, you might make videos on how to sell more. So somebody who consults agents, you help agents become uh, more, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, sorry, I was looking at a comment, uh, helping real estate agents sell more homes and become more successful. So if you're a real estate coach, you might you might have silo one be is how to sell more homes, okay? Silo two might be, you know, the mindset of a successful real estate agent, you know, so on and so forth. Mr. Cast Iron, who I just met recently, uh, is saying that his show is called Weekends with Mr. Cast Iron. And I really like that. Why do I like that as a channel name? Because number one, it tells me what he's doing cast iron stuff, right? So it's cast iron cooking. Um, and then it tells me it's on the weekends. So it's either stuff he's doing on the weekends or it's stuff, uh, or it's broadcast on the weekends. And either way, I love it because it tells me about the show. Too many of you are coming up with this live stream show called like the other side with Bill Jones, right? Or like, or like believe it and achieve it with Sally May. You know, like that doesn't tell me anything about your show. And I get it. Believe it and achieve it. Motivational, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you know. But if you're like a, a, a keto coach or, uh, you know, a dietary coach of some kind, like believe it and achieve it, I don't even know you're talking about keto. And so your channel name should really be like, if you're Paul Peck, the drywall guy, you know, it might want to be like, you, you know, drywall questions answered with Paul Peck. Right. What does that tell me about the show? Tell me it's drywall questions answered. Right. And then in your silos, maybe we've got like drywall questions. Maybe we've got tool questions. Um, maybe we have questions we got from our email. Maybe we got questions, but you have these four silos and you can have more, but let's just start with four that make up your content strategy. Ash is saying, um, uh, so true. Uh, this is a massive issue with podcast names, um, too. I love it. And Ash is saying, you know, it needs to have your keyword in the title and it will rank fast as a podcast. Well, I love that advice because anybody who's live streaming should be, uh, anybody who's live streaming should be uploading it as a podcast and vice versa. If you're podcasting, you should be uploading it as a live stream video. So let's talk about uh, a little bit more on this topic. Okay. Here are some examples of four content silos that that you could be making content about so what about biggest mistakes all right so let's say that you are a productivity author and you've written a book about productivity then maybe it's like the biggest productivity mistakes that business owners make or you know maybe you're a productivity specialist um, for not for like, uh, 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 people, but, but definitely for what I mean is, uh, sorry, I'm getting thrown off by the comments here. Um, animal facts is saying keywords in titles. Yes, absolutely. We're not jumping into keywords too much yet right now, because I, I want to get content strategy first. It is, it is very important folks that you you create a content strategy first and then go do the keyword research okay um and this this pertains specifically to authors speakers and coaches so let's say you're a productivity coach and you teach businesses how to be productive 
That's what I mean. Not people, but businesses, right? So business, like the biggest productivity mistakes HR departments make. The biggest productivity mistakes that sales teams make. You get it? You get what I'm saying about big, biggest mistakes? That's one silo. Okay, silo number two might be versus. If you're a social media consultant, maybe it's Facebook versus LinkedIn. Maybe it's Instagram versus Snapchat. Okay, if you're a, um, a weight loss consultant, like many of my clients, maybe it's, you know, keto versus veganism. Maybe it's uh, weightlifting versus cardio, okay? And you can see how all of this content sort of falls into this arch method as well. So your arch method kind of informs your silos. Your silos uh, then, you know, again, feed that, that system. So let's take this as an example. This, let's say that you've got your, your content silo is going to be how to increase market share. Well, that could turn into multiple topics, like how to increase market share for small businesses. That's one live stream episode. And then how to create, how to increase market share for companies under 10 million. By the way, how to increase market share is also the keyword in this example, but we'll teach more of that at my workshop. If you want to join that free workshop, just go to owenvideo.com slash training and you can attend our workshop where we'll teach the keyword research strategy in far more detail. So let's say that you've got for business under 10 million, but then you've also got like how to increase or seven ways to increase market share. All right, you see how that works? And so when, when my clients go through this training with me, they end up coming up with at least 40 different titles. This one has much more than 40 different titles. But when you have 40 different titles and you live stream once a week, then what happens is you have an episode for every single week of the year. You do. I mean, at least 40 weeks. My point, if you can come up with 40, 52 is easy, right? So, Again, tip number two is you need to create your content strategy based on the primary area of expertise. And you do that by dividing it into four categories called silos and then filling those silos up, silos up with creative content. Now, what about broadcasting that message? Let's, let's kind of wind down with, with tip number three, which I think is actually the strongest tip um, of the show today. And tip number three is you want to schedule your show based on a four week month. And here's what that looks like. What that looks like is, and just again, let, you know, let's just go to the graphic. Here's what that looks like. Okay. That this is an average month. Okay. But notice that I've got like one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five weeks in, in a given month, because your weeks kind of go in and out of some time. Here's the way I want you to, I want you to think about it in four week months where the fifth month, excuse me, the fifth week, you take the week off to check your analytics and to reevaluate your strategy. So I know a lot of you are going like, I don't have the time, right? I'm so busy right now. I'm so busy. I can't get more customers. I'm so busy. I can't live stream and scale my business. I'm so busy. You know, I can't invest. Uh, more into my company. You know, here's the thing. Live streaming is not something that you make time for, okay? Live streaming is so valuable that you actually build your calendar around it. I hope that you really consider that. Okay, so let's go to the live streaming calendar. Brigetti Lim Banda, login in. Great to see you here. Tim Gillette as well, the man with the, the, the best hairstyle in video marketing. So here's why live streaming does not take a lot of time out of your, out of your schedule because it really only takes two hours a week. One, hour, Let's say that you're going to go live on Thursday. So the first thing you need to do is pick a day where you're going to go live. Let's say it's Thursday. You're going to go live Thursday at 9 a.m. every Thursday, okay? That's going to take you an hour. Right, because you live stream for an hour. Maybe you do a half an hour, but it's it's. Let's just say it's you book an hour of your time. 
Then what I want you to do is book an hour on Tuesday to prep your show. Now, could you do Wednesday? Yeah, you could do Wednesday, but but I like to do I like to create rhythms like Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that that type of thing. So the reason that I like Tuesday prep is because when you prep your show on Tuesday, you have time on Wednesday in case you forgot something, in case you didn't get enough out of your hour on Tuesday, you still have Wednesday to play catch up. You know, and I I like having that window. So on Tuesday, you, you prep for your Thursday live stream show. And on Thursday, you're going to talk about topic number one, right? Silo number one. And maybe that's biggest mistakes. So on the first week of the month, you're going to talk about biggest mistakes. And then comes week two. And on week two, however, you're going to now focus on topic two. Again, one hour to prep on Tuesday, another hour to prep on Thursday. On the third week of the month, you're going to talk about topic three. And on the fourth week of the month, you're going to do just a straight Q&A session. On the fifth week of the month, you're going to rest for analytics and to review your content results. Okay? So we're talking about two, four, six eight hours a month plus built-in time for rest and analytics. And truly with the uh, utmost respect, if you are a consultant, an author, or a coach that's worth your weight, then you know that you're wasting eight hours somewhere in your week. And that eight hours can be redirected into a live stream, into a video marketing campaign that will not only generate new clients for you, but it will actually scale your growth. Why? Because after you go live, the show still exists in an evergreen form on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. It's still something that can be emailed out. It's still something that can be used to generate leads for your company. So tip number three is to schedule your show based on a four-week month. Let's review them. Tip number one, separate your audience from your customers. Tip number two is create a content calendar based on your primary of expertise. And tip number three is schedule your show based on a four-week month. And if you want to attend our workshop and go even deeper into this training, then just type training in the comment section right now or go to owenvideo.com slash training. Okay, what I want to do now is open it up to your questions and to your comments so that I can talk with you and I can just kind of stop pressing all the buttons a little bit and we can talk with savvy turtle and we can talk with uh uh tim gillette okay um tim gillette is saying <coughs> i do have another show about programs the simple easy marketing podcast i love the name by the way simple easy how to use content to help your clients find you get to know you and buy from you faster okay so let's Let's sort of unpack that. First of all, Tim Gillette, I think it's great. I mean, on a scale of, of, of one to 10, I give it an eight. And the reason that I mark you down two points, because it is a little wordy, a value statement really should be sort of like, you, you know, seven to 10 words, I think. Um, but here's what I really love about it is find you, get to know you and buy from you. I love that sort of rhythm, that cadence that you have there of, of get you, know you, from you. I also like that you work in threes. And so that's a really good method for, for those of you out there. By the way, if you're struggling to come up with your value statement, type it in the comment section right now. But a, a great way to go about value statements is um, uh, I help X achieve Y with Z, right? So I help $10 million companies achieve profitability, achieve more profitability through um, employee retention, right. Is an example of just using a template and, uh, um, bringing it uh, to the table. Okay. So we got, uh, Demi is saying, uh, super valuable. So glad to have you here. My man, it's your first time here. I don't recognize your, I don't recognize your name. Savvy turtle saying, Oh, and video on fire guys, this is the new stage four, baby. I got stage four cancer and I'm crushing it. I feel great. And I feel great every day. You know why? Because I take care of my mind, my body and my spirit. And we're beating cancer because of it. And whether you are fighting cancer, 
whether you're fighting disease, whether you're fighting a divorce, whatever dragon you're fighting in your life, I know that you can persevere through it because I am and I'm doing really well. So let's go to our next question. Krister Boven is saying smart art. I first of all, love the name, Chris. Um, I help. I help. She's, by the way, Dutch. So so the language is a little off. I help start. Okay, I'm just kind of translating in my mind. So it's like, I help new art collectors buy a good collection, which you can enjoy. Really good. Okay, so so I help, I help new art collectors um, find, uh, invest wisely, find, build strong collections and enjoy art daily. Write that down, Chris. I think that that's, and then share it with me in the video marketing school group. Krister Boven um, has attended one of our workshops. She's been in our program. And so she's in our Facebook group. Really, I, I really like that. I think we need to dial it in, but I really like it. Okay, next question from Science Gal Aquatics. What do you do? I love that. Okay, I have a weekly live on Sundays where I interview other fish tubers, great name, fellow large and small channels, sharing helpful species tips and aquarium facts with hobbyists. I like that. I love it. I love what you do. Let's see, do you have like a like a value statement there? Like, hey, welcome to the show where I interview other fish tubers to help you um, build a better aquarium, find a better fish, and uh, to be the fish lover that you've always wanted to be, right? Do you get it? Now, again, Science Gal Aquatics, if you're crushing it, right, then and things are working for you, then, then keep doing what's working. But if you're looking for a way to professionalize your show, that's, that's where I would go with it. Because you are in my, like, you might think of yourself as a fish tuber. I think of you as an aquatics consultant, you know? And you're, you, you provide probably free consulting on YouTube, okay? So I think that that's really, uh, really good. Krista Bobin is asking a question. She says, I want to make a podcast and a blog with snippets uh, from my live stream about art and antiques. Is that a good idea? Yeah, it's a wonderful idea. In fact, when, when you join one of our programs, that is what we teach. We call it repurposing. And the way that repurposing works is you go live, okay? And then after it's live, you find little one minute segments or two minute segments that you can pull out of that, that longer piece and then repost them as social media content. I would even, you know, um, uh, I would even think about reposting them as, uh, um, ads. Okay. So that, that you can, um, I would even think of posting them as ads so that, that you can actually drive traffic to opt-ins and to leads and to other, um, different, uh, different things. Kimbucha is saying, I never thought of having a value statement. This is great stuff. Hey, go back and check. If you guys like this content, go back and check out my, my, my series on this. We have a whole series of videos on the restream YouTube channel that I think you would really love. We're turning them into a podcast. We're in the, the process of doing that right now. You do it as saying, I create content that educates and empowers you to do things you didn't know you were capable of doing. Um, before you started this adventure. I love it. Let's let's word it down. Uh, to, and let's include who, like, who you create content for, right? So like I create content to empower dads across America to do things they never, to, to, to do things they never thought possible, right? But just really, you know, on the right path and, and, uh, and Savvy Turtle is saying, and you hate cheese. I, I love the comment section that we get, the comment section that we get in this. Um, Paul Peck is saying, uh, could be good for shorts too. Yes. Whether you're talking, Paul Peck, YouTube shorts are awesome for repurposing, by the way. Um, uh, YouTube shorts, TikTok reels. You should look at them as one. Uh, maybe we'll do a con. Nick, do you guys want to know more about YouTube shorts, TikTok, and reels? Let me know in the comment section whether you're watching this live or on the replay. 
Um, I have a quarter million followers on my TikTok channel. That's definitely something we um, could be talking about. Now, Zach has something really important to say. What's wrong with cheese? I agree 100%. As a uh, cancer thriver, uh, I'm on a keto vegan diet, so I eat cheese on the weekends, and it's like the best. It's like the best part of my weekends, honestly. Is is just vegetables covered in cheese, and I I just love um, what we do. Okay, uh, we've got a question. We have a question that came in from uh, uh, Edward J. Weinberg, and he asked this question. Edward asked, "Well, actually, Carlos, can you just pull that on screen? I'll give you a sec." And if you guys are enjoying the content today, hey, tag someone that you know in the comment area right now or share this um, on their screen. Click the share button, grab the link, and then share this with them. Okay, uh, Ed Weinberg is asking a question. He says, why is LinkedIn uh, difficult to manage? Okay, uh, really great question. First of all, it's hard to get approved for live streaming on LinkedIn, and their process has been sort of wonky since the beginning. I mean, I had to apply. I'm Owen Video, folks. And if it's your first time here, welcome. Um, if, if you don't know me, I mean, I, I kind of like set the pace for how to live stream in the live streaming industry. So, you know, and uh, amongst others, there are other great leaders in the space. Um, Stephanie Liu, for example. Uh, Chris Strub is excellent with nonprofits. Scott Ayers. Lots of, Luria Petrucci. Lots of great leaders in the live stream space. But it took me seven attempts to get approved. So how long is it going to take the average person? LinkedIn has a very wonky process for uh, approving people. And I think that that's, um, that's something to, uh, to consider. Now, the other part of that is that LinkedIn, you know, doesn't have the same social capabilities as Facebook and YouTube. So when you're on LinkedIn, you know, here's the thing. I wouldn't recommend streaming on LinkedIn unless you're active on LinkedIn. Uh, we, we are streaming on LinkedIn right now. And I'll tell you right now, there's nobody on LinkedIn watching us. And I'm not, I'm, oops, I'm not embarrassed by that. I'm using it as a point that like, even, even we have to have, you know, uh, a better strategy for LinkedIn. And here's the thing, we're not moving on to LinkedIn right now. Like we're not actively engaged in building a LinkedIn because we got our hands full with YouTube and Facebook. I mean, we got 40 people on right now. We had 45 earlier. Um, and so while we want to grow on, on LinkedIn, we're going to do it in a way that doesn't overwhelm our staff and our resources. And so LinkedIn is on the calendar for next quarter. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, and I think the next question came from Mandy Joe uh, Reindage, who is right, asking about a mystery novel. So, um, Carlos, can you put that question up? And... Um, I'm, I'm trying to look at all the comments that are coming in and I'm not sure which ones are for me and which ones are not. Okay. Uh, Mandy Joe is saying, I am writing a mystery novel. What would I do for live streams? Wow. What a great question. I actually did a whole video series for a mystery author. And if you're out there, Mary, uh, it's been a long time. I hope you're well. Um, and I love staying in touch with your kids, by the way. Uh, look, I've done a ton of video campaigning for authors, and and here's the thing that you need to you need to consider: pre-promote the book, right? Tell people what you're writing about, right? Ask them for feedback on the book. Hey, everybody, it's Mandy Joe, and welcome to the Mystery Novel Show, where you are helping me write my next mystery novel. And today we're going to be talking about, you know, um. The, the biggest cliffhangers, cliffhangers that leave you the most excited. So I'm I'm at this place where I'm writing a cliffhanger uh, for the end of chapter three, uh, and and I want to I want to get your feedback on your favorite cliffhanger. So let's talk about you know what are your favorite cliffhangers. Tell me in the comment section below, and then you start talking about your favorite cliffhangers, right? Did you ever see this book where I talked about this and or that the author did this? You ever see like uh, uh, um, you know uh, what's the book called? Um, the, the Hunger Games. I love how in the Hunger Games, this and this and this happened or whatever the case might be. So, Manny Joe, I would, I would, now here's the thing. You don't have to write your book according to the feedback. But that's, you. but you're considering it maybe. Like you're, you're, you're getting people interested in your content based on the fact that you're writing a mystery novel. Uh, and I think that's a great way to, to build your email list. 
as well. Okay, I want to welcome Razmin's message from the Spirit. Um, I see, Razmin, that you have a couple questions, and I'm not sure where the questions begin. So, Carlos, if you could sort of find that for me, I want to say what's up to my man, Leroy, Animal Facts, kicking it live. Good to have you here, my man. Leroy, by the way, somebody I've known uh, for a long time and someone who just went from like having a job in YouTubing to being a full-time YouTuber with no job um, and a strong political opinion. <laughs> and we've remained good friends through it all. Good to have you here, Animal Facts. Our next question comes from Charlotte Ann Moore, someone who I love dearly. Charlotte is asking, say I'm able to get on LinkedIn. Could we use Restream on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram all at the same time? Okay, the answer is yes, but are you sure that you want to? And here's why, because LinkedIn, excuse me, Instagram is not necessarily the place for business content, okay? I would actually use Instagram to, to promote the live stream once it's already been done or when it's coming. Now, um, I know a lot of people are going, uh-uh, oh, and you can't live stream on Instagram. Well, I know something you don't know, okay? There is a website called, oh, it is, I have to look it up right now, guys, sorry. Um, I, I can't, I can't, Lula, Lula.tv. Yeah, let me look that up just to be sure. I think it's Lula, L-O-O-L-A, Lula.tv. With Lula.tv, you can live stream from, to Instagram from your desktop computer. Now, to do that, you would need to use Restream, put it up, put the window up as your um um you would set up a tab on lula.tv and then when you live stream you would live stream that screen okay so it can be done it's a little bit of a hack but yes you can do it do you want to do it i would say no i would go live on facebook youtube and and linkedin and then i would promote that event and 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 post the highlights on instagram now another thing you could do charlotte and more and and i i like now, it's not true. I, I hate Instagram because it's difficult. And as soon as you learn it, they change the algorithm on you, right? Because Instagram is kind of a, it's an establishment platform. It's not really designed to help small people come up. It's designed to make sure that you see Starbucks. You should see um, uh, Starbucks. You should see McDonald's. You should see the Kardashians. Like, that's what Instagram is all about. Now, I know some of you out there going, nah, uh nah, uh nah, uh Look fine, you know, go, go that route. I, I'm not going to argue with you in our coaching program. We focus on YouTube, LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay. So we use Instagram to engage with people. Instagram is kind of like our, uh, it's like, it was like a free group. It's almost like our customer service hotline. It's where people could just check in and see what we're doing. And, um, uh, and, and ask, I'm very active in my comment section on Instagram. So those are some things to think about. Okay, so let's go to, um, oh, geez, we're out of time. Let's go to um, uh, the rest of our questions and we'll get out of here. So let's go to okay then, um, uh, Carlos. Do we have, okay, Pixel Pia is saying, do you think multi-streaming is great from the start or should you start on one platform and then expand? I think that both are good strategies, Pixel. You know, it really depends on where your audience is. See, for, for me, I have good audience on Facebook and I have good audience on YouTube. So I don't want to leave them out. I use restream. I use live streaming as a chance to bring my audiences together. Okay. If you're active on, on YouTube, but you're not that active on Facebook, you, like most of your Facebook is family, friends, and cousins, then, then I, I, I would only focus on YouTube. Okay. And then once YouTube gets big, maybe then start expanding as, as you said. So take a look at where you are now, you know, and where your best, um, where your best activity is coming from. And then, uh, and then take it to that next step. Okay. We got a super sticker, $20 from Paul Peck. Um, who says pair, uh, a pair of character dancing under a rain of confetti and taking off his hat to say, you are amazing. I can't tell if you wrote that or if that's like, 
the computer translating an image. Um, Susie Valentin is saying, uh, what Owen just said is so true. I first watched Owen on Facebook and then I started watching on YouTube. Yeah, that's a great point. And Susie, that's kind of like my, like my goal is I want my Facebook friends watching over on YouTube. It's a better experience, um, on, on, uh, YouTube. If you, uh, if you ask me, okay. Uh, we did have, we did have one more question that came from, okay, then. Let me just put this in the, the comment section real fast and we'll end with this. Let's put that on screen. I'm running real slow here. Okay, our next question is coming from o, from OK Then, who says, do you think live streaming is pointless for me who has 36 subs or should I wait until I have 200 or 400 subscribers? Um, that is a phenomenal question. Start live streaming now. Live streaming, I think if you do it correctly and you follow my program, by the way, I have lots of free training on live streaming on my Owen Video YouTube channel. Look up Owen Video on YouTube. I also have a great series on live streaming on the Restream YouTube channel. Go check that out. If you follow my method, then the live stream videos that you do will be the ones that get you the most subscribers. Okay, so no matter what the sign, no matter where you are in your journey, you should start live streaming now and you should do it strategically. We've got a message in from Demi who is saying, Owen, oh, check the GoFundMe page. We just crossed $90,000, folks. That is $90,000 that people like you have helped generate to help me pay for the metabolic and the standard of care therapy that I need to treat my cancer. If you guys are looking at me and you're going like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Owen's sick. Yeah, I was diagnosed nine months ago. And at that time, I couldn't even get out of bed. I was so weak. I was so frail. My body was shaking. And I remember thinking, how am I going to do this restream show? I remember thinking, man, I don't know how to do this. You know, I need to get better. And so we started doing metabolic therapy. And immediate, it took about a month, but immediately I started feeling better and then better and then better. And so we're raising money to help pay for that, that, uh, uh, that treatment. And you guys have helped us raise over $90,000. Wow. We had a $5,000, uh, donation that came in. So I just want to say a huge, meaningful, big old fat Thank you to all of you that have helped make this thing possible. Restream has helped uh, sponsor that event as well. And we're grateful for the folks over at Restream for doing that, guys. That's all the time we have today. Thanks so much for being here. It was great to live stream with you. Don't forget to go to owenvideo.com slash training to register for our upcoming live streaming and YouTube strategy event. It's totally free. We're going to be going through the four uh, strategies of the YouTube Pro system, programming, production, promotion, and progress. I think you're really going to love it. Have